Something in the air That says Christmas is near Maybe it's the peppermint scent From the candle that's sitting in the windowsill Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you for this wonderful Friday. Today is our second to the last day of school. Uh, and please help, help Dr. Lee to deliver, d deliver the words and please help us to be healthy in this cold weather. In Jesus' name pray, amen. Okay, uh, well done everyone. And uh, let's, uh, Amazing journey uh, we went through this semester as well. Uh, yes, yesterday I was thinking about um, the message I spoke to the, your parents um, last day of the um, fall semester, uh, 2021. And I still remember the message I shared. And I feel like yesterday, you know, to share the message. But wow, time really goes fast. We have seen the, your physical growth and spiritual growth, a lot of growth uh, you know, bearing fruit with teachers, uh, their commitment, and definitely your dedication as well. What a great achievement you have done. Uh, if you don't mind, also I would like to have uh, some sort of the appreciation time before we uh, listen to, you know, to the Word of God. Um, your teachers, um, a lot of uh, you know, great achievement, even the um, which, what I mentioned, you know, you have finished uh, this journey without their sacrifice, without their commitment, it is really hard to, you know, we have this great uh, time. So if you don't mind, can we uh, say a thank you uh, with our big hands to our teachers? All right, thank you very much. All right. okay, thank you very much. Okay. And also, I want a uh, class of 2023, 12th grader, please stand up, uh, please stand up. Let's say, uh, well done, guys. So, so please stand up. Oh, good job. Shigan, please stand up. Please. Come on. Haley, you're not 12th graders? OK. All right. All right, one more time. Let's give a big hand. OK, good job. All right, good job. All right. Please have a seat. Um, they actually haven't finished yet. So still <laughs> working on a lot of things. Uh, um, well, the, as a community, a Christian community, um, we are going to encourage each other and sometimes review you know, our mistakes and then how we could figure out, you know, get better. That's the, um, also another assignment. Uh, we, as a community, we you know, encourage each other also work together. Well, um, one of actually academic responsibility is ultimate goal is going to college, definitely. Um, this you know, application season, and uh, we have seen some received heard about you know, good news, and I would like to share with you guys. One of the students, uh, Noah, got accepted at uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, University. Let's give a big hand as, as a con congratulations. All right. Um, all the decision, which is the uh, very competitive and uh, also very high uh, acceptance rate with a lot of uh, you know, academic um, achievement, which is the uh, you know, a lot of uh, good scores and even the uh, good uh, the, the records. And um, he, I believe uh, this school really fits to his um, uh, even career and uh, you know, hobby and even his uh, concentration. So um, this school is one of the top schools for a STEM major and the computer science. And uh, of course, you know, the math, he applied, he got accepted uh, applied science actually, I mean math. And, uh, also, the if you really interested in theater art, uh, the Tony Award, you know, a lot of you know, the people got you know this achievement. Uh, they actually came from this school too, and Nobel, you know, a Nobel Prize, you know, award in the winner too. A lot of people that graduated this school, and um, also the we just got a heard from Emily. Um, it's not final result, but uh, she she applied to Harvard University, but. But she now got, it is called a uh, differ, which means uh, wait a little bit another uh, semester. Uh, but you know, still, uh, they consider about her application and a lot of you know, um, what's called a uh, you know, package she submitted is really, really impressing. Well, uh, in terms of actually, I believe, especially Harvard you know, got accepted, even the uh, deferral, deferral, the status, it's not easy at all. So 
I, 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 you know, we actually, the teachers and if all the people, uh, we want to say a good, great job to Emily. So why don't we give her the big hands as an encouragement? <laughs> okay. um, and other students of the 12th class of 2023, uh, not only the uh, ranking driven, we also we really encourage them also, you know, give them great, you know, achievement what they have done so far, and we pray that they are going to college in terms of their academic, spiritual, the fit. And we hope that um, they are going to um, you know, have a good result uh, through the next about uh, one month or two months of the journey, the applications and the essay. And uh, we pray that uh, God prepares uh, the schools. That they are going to uh, get accepted and they also go to college with a lot of you know, joy and uh, excitement and a lot of uh, meaningful uh, the journey for the next you know, four years. So uh, I believe uh, other students, um, they're going to have a great uh, achievement in um, you know, the next two or three months. And other students um, from elementary and middle and high school students, um, you guys have done a great job. And tomorrow is the uh, sort of the banquet day, which is a celebration um, with your um, vocals and some uh, teamwork. So um, those who are still a uh, little bit uh, academically, a uh, little bit challenging, or facing some difficulties, spiritual also difficulties, uh, let's try to work together and uh, make it better yourself. And also next semester, even winter school, let's try to use this one as a great uh, resource and even the, the period of time. I'd like to talk about the message um, about Christmas. When I was a kid, Parents um, give the name to the, their kids. But my parents' generation, I call their generation, especially my mom and my grandparents' generation, as it is called suffering generation. It means that they have to go through a lot of difficult periods. Japanese colonization and Korean War. And economic depression and dictatorship and a lot of social competition they went through. In Korea, when I was a kid, it was not economically, it was not rich at all. And we tried to, my parents actually, my grandparents tried to survive, having survival game every day. Korea has actually, the recently actually now become one of our you know, richest economic the countries. And now, it's like now we are going to give a share of a lot of things with other countries. My parents' generation, you know, one of the popular names, the female names, they made this name to the kids as what? It's with the pride or hope. Give this name, then they will be better, or successful, or blessed. One of the popular female names is Yongja, Yongsu, Misu. And last one is maybe 2,000 years about Soyeon. So, and Cheolsu is really one of the names really uh, famous too. Cheolsu, the, about among the, uh, the, ma the, the males. What about today? It's like male is to be a Yongsu, Yongho, and Jiun, and about that kind of name, and then your name's here too, all right? Which is like, maybe, yeah, which is good, you know, used to be popular. And when I was a kid, the, we call like you know, Yongsu, Yongho, there's a lot of, you know, popular names. And, uh, and then Minjun, then Sojun, Juwon, Yejun, So, that's the uh, kind of trendy names, right? What about 2000? 20 or 2010, Minho. <laughs> if you Google it, my name is E Minho, right? Uh, seriously, like uh, wherever I go, especially uh, you know South, you know, the Asia, I'm so popular person. When they check my the passport, they will really impress. Oh, you are E Minho, and they really happy, you know, joy on their face. I could tell, and. There's so many different types of Minho among 
actually celebrities in South Korea. Here, Mino Shiny. Do you know this guy? No. Oh, then. <laughs> Do not know me yet, Don't you know this song? Right. Replay, replay. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, Shiny. And boom! This guy is a comedian. Is the, uh, he's also the Lee Min Ho. You, you don't know about that, right? He used to be boy band, actually, remember? And then he purchased a building, I guess, like this Huam Dong building. And it's like another Lee Min Ho is the LG. There are pictures, like one of the famous guys. Like, he, but his character is horrible, by the way, what I heard that. Um, Lee Min Ho is like a really famous boy. boy. A lot of people, they prefer having Lee Min Ho what? become famous. So you, you must problemize, I mean, you must problem your principal you know, as a Lee Min Ho. So um, I'm a, one of the persons like a lot of people acknowledge a really famous person. Well, name, it is important. When you have name from your parents or make the English names, you have a lot of plans. What is good? Probably your future, your relationship, but definitely related with your future. People call your name with something, expectations. Maybe better, maybe some impressing. And think about, it is called future. What is your dream? What is my dream? Let me ask this question, elementary students. What is your dream right now? Middle school students. What is your dream? High school, class of 2023. What is your dream at this moment? Probably a lot of people, they talk about, talk about, think about money, this one, a superstar. I wanna have certain goal and achieve superstar, which is the famous or the person a lot of people acknowledge or being recognized. At least, reputation, fame, something, success, related with money, money, a lot of money, show me the money, right? Show me the money. So you want to have a certain name, hope, expectation, dream, a lot of, it feels like mythology that what makes me something famous, achieve something, goal, related with money, money. Capitalism, 자본주의에서 돈이 없으면 안 되겠죠. A lot of people go to college related with money, majors related with money. Everything's money. People say that. Why? Because this society demands, or needs, requires this materialistic the views and perspectives. You know, when I was a kid, this is actually BTS. This one. You know, BTS. So how many members? Seven? I thought 12. So, no, anyway, seven? Seven, yeah. Jesus' names, Jesus' disciples, so by the way. Anyway, I don't, na I don't know about their names, but probably you guys know that, right? I only know Jungkook. So, other people, I don't know about that. Okay, anyway. So, but you don't know about Jesus' name, Jesus' disciples' names, name, probably. But interesting is one. Seven members. But people around them, it is called back dancers. When I was high school, kids, one of the actually famous dreams among high school kids, 1990, back dancers. Why? They dance, and one day they become, they have some chance to become rich or famous, like superstar. So a lot of today, like some, you know, uh, kids, uh, you know, they will interest they become uh, some entertainers or famous, let's say, celebrities. Then what? They go to what? Agent like SM, JYP, some YG, something like that. Agent and the entertainment, of the, some you know supporters. So they start as uh, actually back dancers, back dancers. That is the first stage become superstar. People they assume that. So when I was in high school, a lot of kids that. I want to be a back dancer and dance, dance and behind what? The superstars, being inspired, influenced by them. So that kind of a dream they had all the time. So this is the um, Blackpink. Listen, 
only two girls here, but so many back dancers. Back dancers. I assume that probably back dancers, they have a lot of mixed feeling. When there's the moment I could become like them, superstars, or ambition, I want to be like them, or compassion, I want to practice and dance like them and then be one day superstar. Just chasing black pink members, chasing PTS members. Behind where? They're dancing on the stage. They're chasing their goal, their superstar, right in front of them. HOT, if you know this person, you're old actually. 1990 or yeah, it was all in 1990, HOT. What is HOT. Hot. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I have to say it. hot. Yeah. So like uh, Candy is like one of the famous you know, songs. That when we heard about this song, only about members of five people, but back dancers are more than five or ten people that dance together, support this guy. So Teji, come back home. You don't know? I'm old, actually, yeah. <laughs> when I was in college, he's a superstar, seriously. Still, he's really, you know, really famous. But in order to support three people, more than 10 or 15 back dancers that dance, make their performance as what? More better and more beautiful or maybe some spectacular. Back dancers. You know, the, uh, another uh, dreams, when I was uh, even high school, a lot of kids said, I want to become, it is called imdeopja, which means a real estate. Some buying a lot of buildings, owners, and let them use my building, just rental fees I would like to collect every day, every month. So one of the news is one, one person actually, Yukshipte, which is 60 years old person who is living in Gwangju, he or she has how many buildings? 2,312 buildings. Can you imagine? One person. Another 50 years person, 2,062 buildings. Buildings. I don't have actually a house. I don't have one building. But one person has about more than 2,000 buildings. Can you imagine every month how much he earned or she earned the money? Just what? Just stop by buildings, collect the money, that is her or his job. But a lot of kids, they want to prefer chasing this goal somehow as what? Teenager or college. Why? It is related with money, the success. People say that. Microsoft company, Bill Gates, if you don't know about this person, please know, you have to know, study. Because he um, actually went to Harvard and then dropped out and then you know, started a new company by himself. Where? Garage. Chunk was a garage. Small, little tiny room. Started with a huge dream. What? Future, futuristic, the goal. One day, people, they do have small laptop or computer. One day. So let me start creating, innovating software, which is the computer programs. He started. And today, he becomes, even the last, or like 20 years, become the, one of the top richest the man in the world, actually. I actually researched the Forbes, actually like, mentioned that, what he asset, which is the annual income, or the, his money, what he has prop, property, is like 107.5. Four billion dollars. This is the point. Do you know how much? How much? One point seven billion. Here, first one is. 이거 얼마인지 아세요? 138 조. 138 조 7천 억. 아직 감이 모를 거야. And the next one is 226 조. Do you know how much is this one? I mean, the money this one belongs to Elon Musk. Elon Musk one. Yeah. 138 조. 226조. 이거 얼마인지 내가 설명해 줄게요. Korea annual budget. 한국 1년 예산이 639조예요. Go back to here. 138조, 226조. One person owns. 
So like Korea 600조, which means one person, maybe three Elon Musk, almost same as Korea. Can you imagine? One person owns, possess, it's like ridiculous money, countless money they do have. Probably they can't use, spend you know, this money, consume this money until they die. So, for example, this is the house, actually, Bill Gates. The Seattle, actually, in Washington. Then one of our, the rooms is this one, like right in front of the ocean. It's like everything's luxury furniture. And look at this one. Wow. I wish it is a hotel, more than a hotel, right? Probably. And this one is in the one of the rooms. It's like it's accordion. It's like the Suzukan. Look at this. Can you imagine? It's like whale, like a dolphin. It's like swimming right in front of you in your room. Can you imagine? And this one is another kitchen. It's like, you know, it's like, wow. It's like, it's maybe, right? It looks like the sea world, like maybe like, you know, what is it? Aquariums, right? So this is one of the rooms of Bill Gates' house. Why? So much money. That's what people, they said, I want to establish like another Microsoft company and have a lot of money. Superstar. Why? People become rich. A good house. And their kids, better life, better environment, better school. Everything's better. Why? Because of money. A superstar. That is the uh, people they want to achieve. One of the persons like the super richest man in the world, actually what Bible mentioned in the world, actually it is called King Solomon. I believe he must be richer than Bill Gates today. Why? Because he's the king. Long time ago, Old Testament, in Israel. Right after King David, God, he was really impressed by King Solomon. Why? Because he's really obedient. He worshiped the Lord. He only focused on God, and he pleased God with his sincere faith. Then one day, God came to his life and asked this question, What do you want? I will give you everything what you want. And he confessed, he asked, he told God that, Lord, I don't need money. I don't need faith. I need wisdom to please you, to run the country well, to manage any conflict issues make a great solution to worship you. God was touched. God was impressed by his confession. He, conf he told Solomon that, I will give you wisdom and a lot of prosperity. What the Bible mentioned that, this is what God blessed his life and country Israel. Here, look at this one. 4.5 tons of gold per year. I don't know how much we could fill this one, how much, like a lot of, you know, this much, the gold, and 6,000 kilograms of wheat per day, and 12,000 kilograms of beef, sogi, per day, and 4,000 kilograms of other meats per day. Can you imagine? 고기를 먹는데, 12,000 kilograms a day. The beef and other meats about 4,000 kilograms. They have so many cows, so many, those called uh, maybe the pigs, a lot of maybe dogs or kid, uh, chicken, you know, a lot of meats they have. Of course, you know, crops, you know, crops that they do have. So, like, is that abundantly they are blessed. But somehow, as long as King Solomon aged, with his blessing, his faith has became what? Faith, weak, and more focused on himself, pleasure, ambition, please himself. And what Bible mentioned that, at the end, end of the, his age, he confessed that, I have so much money, even he, he had about 3,000 wives actually, and what is finish up his life with this confession? Meaningless. Meaningless. 
says the teacher, everything is meaningless. Emptiness. Somehow, a lot of prosperities, a lot of portion, gold, money, women, fame, wisdom, everything's what he had, but life became meaningless. What he confess? Why? Because he lost his faith. Completely, he got lost. He didn't trust God what he used to be. After King Solomon, God was really disappointed, and unfortunately, Israelites, the country was divided, divided into two countries. Because what? King Solomon disobedience. Disobedience. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this world. But interesting is this one. We call Jesus as what? The Messiah. King of this country, this world. We call him Savior. But in terms of King Solomon's perspective, our perspective, your perspective, my perspective, the secular world perspective, king must be rich. King must be born as what? Palace. King must be born as what? Rich family, like Bill Gates. Maybe King Solomon family. But somehow, God's plan completely it changed. Upside down perspective. He was born in small little town. It is called Bethlehem. It's really country town. The Bible, Matthew chapter 2, 10 said, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. The wise man that saw the star, the star, what people they're looking for, waiting. This is the moment we got to find and follow, chase. Why? We need to see, find what? Our superstar savior, Messiah. And they're overjoyed to follow. And this is the journey. The wise man, wise man from the Middle East country. And here, the, uh, what the Bible said, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, when it was a small little time, probably on the way to follow the, the star, the wise man got confused. Are we okay? I mean, the right? It's supposed to be capital city, which is Jerusalem, or bigger city, not small little town. They may ask themselves, correction all the time. Is it okay? In terms of what? Their knowledge, their secular views. Is it okay? But without question, they just follow the star. Obey. With what? Hope. One day they're going to see the Messiah, Savior, the town God prepared. And this is the reality, what his God's plan. Luke chapter 2, verse 16. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the what? Manger. Marikuyu. Marikuyu. Look at this uh, picture. Is a manger is what? Is it fancy? Can you imagine barn? Cow, pig, and chicken. All the smell is what? Really pretty bad, isn't it? Even though it's winter season, but smelly location, God prepared, reserved for the Messiah, the King we expected. The major, like horrible, the smelly thing, Jesus supposed to be lying down. And the parents, God used through the Holy Spirit, Mary, uneducated person, Joseph. His job was what? Carpenter. Never ever been to school. But God used them as what? God's instruments. And this is the Bible verse, what Luke chapter 2 and 10 to 11 said. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. He's the Messiah, the Lord. God's plan for the king Messiah with the uh, small little town is a horrible condition, but Jesus, the born is over there. We call him what? It is called joy and hope and the Messiah.
we've been looking for. Jesus is superstar we're looking for, everyone. But somehow, we're looking for superstar with our perspectives, secular perspective. But Jesus never ever talk about money, never ever talk about its goal. But we looking for the superstar, Jesus would still, it is called secular perspectives. That part, Christmas season, we need to what? We have to think about that. Upside down perspective, what God has for Jesus and you and I. We celebrate Christmas, God with us, Emmanuel, what Miss Joyce talked about last semester and uh, last week. Superstar, we're chasing Jesus, but Jesus required you and I. We lay down what we have, desire, all the time want. College, money, women, the man, success. This is not the main goal, what Jesus asked you. And he wants us to have what? It's hope and faith and follow obedience. And he wants us to make us what? His people. Let me finish up, wrap up this sermon with this story. Finish up about five minutes. Give me five minutes. Last two months, uh, we have received a lot of applications to our school for 2023 and spring semester. And the acceptance rate is about 25%, which means 10 people apply, and then about around eight people got rejected, or seven people got rejected. How we can interpret this one? Our school is too good. A lot of people cannot apply. They're academically really behind, or lack of motivation they do have, or their parents not good supporters. A lot of interpretations uh, we could have. Maybe analysis of the, uh, the data. How we can think about this research? I researched about UC Davis, about ranking about 38 in internation the states. Their acceptance rate is about 46 percentile. Are we are better than UC Davis? Not really. And another question is this one. Those who got accepted, are they super good? But our students, current students, are they better than others? I don't think so. A little bit preparation better. Maybe your academic achievement a little bit better. Maybe spiritual engagement is better. Question is this one. You and I, we have to think about this one. What is the main purpose of Juniper Christian School? God used the school for His glory. Are we uh, creating the atmosphere only prestige people who are qualified for only academic, spiritual, even money? Not really. God's perspective for Christian school, I believe, that's not the same way what we have, even what we want. Juniper means, as you know, the Rodan was the place, a lot of broken, who needs some help, hope, future, Jesus. They willing to knock the door over here. And we have them the chance and opportunities to be shaped and be sent out by this education community to the world, secular world, as what? Well, his messengers. Maybe our school, maybe our community, and yourself, myself, maybe we are not ready to have them in terms of maybe academics, system, maybe our abilities, maybe our spiritual accommodation. I don't think they're all the responsibility goes to their themselves, those who got rejected, which means maybe think about our system, maybe our academic abilities, or maybe accommodation or the admission part, we have to think about how we can fix, make it better, welcome, welcome a lot of people, maybe we shape them. One of our purpose and goals, I started this school with this dream or hope, I mean the, the plan. People, students, they deserve to get better quality of education in Jesus Christ. They're the people who deserved the Christian education, listen to gospel, gospel, and Christian education be sent by God. 
to the world. One of the students got to interview this one. She's a high school student, and lack of concentration, lack of confidence, and low self-esteem, which is the uh, no confidence, and no self-efficacy, which means uh, no any anxiety. I mean, I'm sorry, the willingness. Somehow, being stressed out all day, every day about study, test, ranking, college. Frankly, it was really touching me. Yeah. And think about my daughter, my kid. What if my kids went through that kind of situation? And I, as a parent, am I happy? 여러분, 우리 학교에서 공부를 할 때, 제가 부탁드리고 싶은 거는 뭐냐면, 우리만 있으면 안 된다고 생각해요. 여러분 뿐만 아니라, 많은 학생들이 여러분 같은 기회를 난 누려야 된다고 생각합니다. 그를 위해서 우리 스스로가 더 열심히 준비해야 되고, 마음과 학업과 심정 공동체들이 준비하는 것이 우리의 모습이라고 생각합니다. 아무나 받는 것은 아니지만, 그런 마음을 가져야 된다고 생각해요. 왜? Students, you and I, and even the other students, they need this education, which is what? Hope of Jesus Christ. Christmas. Jesus came to this world for you and I. And hope of God, the message. Christian school's main goals, one of the goals is what? Share this message, hope of God. So um, we're trying to work on this one next semester. And we're trying to support you guys more. And message, and study, and also quality of education. Definitely, we're going to develop more and share this message, this education opportunities with many people until Jesus comes back. We finish up our mission. Well done. Let's celebrate at Christmas and let's say thank you to our Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, well, we thank you for your message and your sacrifice. And love. God loved the world. You decided sending your only son, Jesus Christ, to this world. With upside down perspectives, Jesus was born here, our Savior. Lord, uh, encourage us to have your perspective. Not chasing the star, money, name, and fame. Remind us the purpose of Jesus, why he was born here. Your purpose, your dedication, Christmas, not only celebration, gifts, exchange love and gifts, instant love, that's not the purpose. Through this celebration, Christmas, we like to approach those who need Jesus, those who have wounds, broken hearts, with your hope, with your love, with your relationship. Make us your instructors, instruments, and people, messengers, Lord. Regardless of the age, younger students, the older students, even the staff members, shape them, make them your messengers, Lord. We believe, year 2022, that such a great, meaningful journey we have done will finish this semester. Thank you so much for our teachers and parents students. Lord, I remind them, this time, this is the first time, the last time in our lives. That's why every day is really special, meaningful, and precious. Lord, until we see you, please encourage us to do our best. Those especially that are preparing the college, class of 2023, Lord, I encourage them, not only ranking driven, but purpose journey, processing, learning, and you, faith, facing any difficulties, encourage them to be in prayer. Depend on your voices. Follow your direction. Listen to your calling. Other students, middle school and high school students, and even other high school students, encourage them to listen to your voice 
and all the time depend on you, Lord. Our teachers, encourage them, remind them your calling, and shape them. One day, they will put you, you're going to put them in the, uh, your different location or different you know, environment. Make them more influential leaders, teachers, mentors. But thank you so much for our parents who dedicate, commit all the time in this situation, all difficulties, Lord. Encourage them to think about you, that their kids as a gift from you. And then encourage them to follow your step with their faith, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.